<laughs> That's how I know this motherfucker love coaching. Cause uh, if you can coach up AD and no. tell AD, hey, bro, yeah, you did make that play, but uh, your gap over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, ten, ten years, dog. Yeah, right. you, he's ten. You, you should be set for for life and everything, man. Mm-hmm. Like. But it's just a matter of taking care of your body, man, and, and doing those things, like investing in your body to take care of your body. I yeah. think a lot of times. I'm joined with my co-host with the most, Mr. Petty Pat. Yo, Talk what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Petty Pat, lead brand designer of Brock Brand Clothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today, we're in a special uh, building today. As you can see behind us, we're in USC's facility. Um, joined with my man, Mr. Eric Henderson. Man, this coach has been, you know, this man has been just phenomenal to me um, over these past couple of years since I've known him. He came to the ramp to us in 2019. Um, his dog work mentality is something that the D line for the Rams was our was our aura. It was something that you just knew we were coming with. Um, he won the Super Bowl in 2022 with the Los Angeles Rams, and let's not forget, man, he's a phenomenal husband and father, Mr. Eric Henderson. What up, baby? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Happy to be here, man. Appreciate yes, you stopping through, dog. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having us. Briefly talk about, I mean, because you, you're the oldest. I'm, I was the oldest of five growing up, and uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't the first person to go to college, but it, it all, almost was like I was that golden child. You know, I had to make the right decisions, things like that. Did you, do you find yourself having that pressure of being the guy of the family? No doubt, bro. You know, and I, I tell people all the time, you know, just sitting in homes or visiting with parents and, 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 and student athletes, and you kind of get those chances to share your story. Um, one of the things I always talk about was just how I felt like I had to walk on eggshells in a sense um, because of my upbringing, you know, mm-hmm. knowing that um, it was important for myself to to do the things I needed to do to help my brother and my sister's right, life right, right. become what they wanted to become or give them the opportunity to to uh, at least, mm. you know, try to reach goals that they set out for right. themselves. And so I couldn't mess off, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you know, go off on, on a deep end, if you will. So I right. had to walk right. on eggshells. I had to do things that I probably didn't think was fun, mm-hmm. you know, in college. Or, what you know, the things that I wanted to experience, I felt like I couldn't really do those things because if I fucked up, then it was going to be one of those deals where I'm jeopardizing not everybody. only myself, but everybody. Man, that's and crazy. And so that was that was real for me. Yeah. And I, I lived that. And so that's how I can encourage a lot of cats nowadays, man. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a fine line on how you carry yourself mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and, and what you allow yourself to be involved in because all that shit plays a major role. In that's the, that's in crazy you saying that because I coached youth football for, for 10 years, yeah. and I tell my kids all the time, Watch what you post on social media, right? right? Because that it can affect the rest of your life from high school up to colleges because a lot of these players, a lot of these kids are getting recruited off of a lot of social media. So these coaches, and you a coach, I'm pretty sure you go look at kids' social media too. And I'm like, bro, why y'all want to Why y'all want to post this stuff? Like, you, right. you not living that street life. Like, mm-hmm. why do you want to do that? You see all these, even the guys in the street saying, look, man, get out of here. This ain't what you want. Why y'all, and then you have, we got the kids with both of their parents. You you got a, a chance to go to college. Why are you trying to get back into the streets, right? right? Exactly. Because all the, they say the real gangsters either dead or dead or in jail, right? So why would you want to jeopardize your future and try and if you got a chance to go to college? Why would you want to go back to the streets? That shit don't make you cool. Like going to school and getting an education, then getting to the league or doing whatever you got going on in your life. That shit gonna make you look cool, right? Real talk. Right. Real talk. Man. What was um? What was your? Who was your inspiration growing up? Um, t- it's weird, bro. But I was really inspired by the way Magic Johnson moved. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of like his business mm-hmm. career and you know having Starbucks and everything that he that he was getting himself involved in. That was always inspiring to me. You know, even though he wasn't 
a guy that played football or, or you know, I just like the, the you know, his the way mindset, that his, yeah. Yeah, his mindset, his approach to business. You know, I wanted that for myself. Yeah. It was just for me, the way I wanted to try to get, get to that was, you know, football. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my inspiration, um, you know, growing up just – from a mindset standpoint. Right, that's crazy. A basketball player influence you, <laughs> you know, crazy, do your right? thing in, in no football. Doubt. Hell yeah. Um, let's talk about, you know, your coaching and, and yeah. or your coaching or just coaching in general. How has that changed over the last couple of years? Because I can say this, the guys who played in back in the day, they were tougher. And, and I say that because they were mentally tougher. You know, they could take the construct constructive criticism and keep going. This This day and age, I feel like, uh, coaches do a lot to like mitigate, like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to break him, like, I don't want to, you know, mess up his mentality, you know, like, yeah. why is that? Like, th does coaching have to change because the players? Yeah, yeah. Are Before we get off into truly diving into the to the coaching aspect, yeah, 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 of it, yeah, I just yeah. want to take a second to say congratulations, brother. Oh man, you know, like, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I really yeah, appreciate yeah, yeah. you, man. Like that's big time, you know, on a, on a eleven year career in the mm -hmm. NFL. You know, hanging the, the cleats up, retiring, like, that shit yeah. is major. Yeah. And yeah. I just want the world to know how much I really appreciated you, Man. dog. That's and, real. And, and That's the way real. That, that, that you went about your business, like, always was professional about everything you did, the natural leadership skills, like, that shit come from the heart. And I really do appreciate you, dog, and That's being real. able to give you your flowers, you know, and, and, you know, just knowing that you was a true blessing for me, seeing how you were with your kids, your family, Wife, the way you handle your business like that is phenomenal, dog. Mm -hmm. And so there's not a lot of cats out here that's rocking like that and then continuing to, to carry on the legacy and, and, and moving forward in your second career like like you're doing major things, man. Yes, sir. And so I appreciate you, big man, dog. Man, I you appreciate you. Yes, Straight sir, love. man. Go accept them flowers, man, because, you know, <laughs> when you do the right things, man, you and I pride myself on making the right decisions, yeah. dog, and – you know, doing it the right way, dog, because, you know, I, th I just think God go bless you for that. No you doubt. know, it might not be right immediately, but right. I just, man, I don't want no bad, bad juju, bad karma in the world, man. Just do everybody right, yeah. treat everybody right, man, and you're going to be blessed, man. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I move. Love. No, no, um, that's what's up. But, but let's get on the coaching, man, yeah. and seeing, you know, seeing the coaches and the players. The players have definitely changed, yep. so I feel like the coaching has changed. Like, do you do you feel like – You've changed in your coaching styles between over the years of you you coaching. I think there's always you know room for growth. Like mm -hmm. that's just the way my mind works. Like yes, I never yes, want to yes. stay the same. Right. I'm always looking to to elevate the game, to push push the game. Mm -hmm. You know, to to uh, operate outside of the norm, mm -hmm. to uh, you know test the norm. You know, right, like right, all right. of those things are just how my mind works. From a creativity standpoint, whether that be drill work, whether that be the way you treat people, whether that be dealing with different types of people nowadays, like yeah. all of that stuff is how I feel like I always went about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's paid dividends as to what's happened in my career. And uh, and I'm just thankful that, that I'm blessed to have that kind of mindset, that kind of go-getter mentality, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And just knowing that when you trust in what you believe in, like, people respect it. Yeah. And you treat people the right way. At the end of the day, like, you should be Gucci. Right. It was crazy because, like, when you came to the Rams in 2019, I was already used to work. I went to LSU. You know, it, it wasn't going to get no harder than LSU, you know. And then I had I had Mike Waffle earlier in my career. <laughs> so he, he was a hell of a D-line coach, you know. So wow. just, you know, the working wasn't nothing new to me. But it was just something about that dog work mentality, mm -hmm. our little pit where we worked out right. at. We had a corner a uh, hundred feet away from the door because yep. we got to be the furthest <laughs> away. You feel me? And nobody messed with us. And, you know, Coach had us rocking, bro. Like, we went uh, from one drill to another drill to another drill no. to another drill. It's <laughs> funny, bro, because I it, listening to him and Morgan talk, like, I, it's always Coachini, Coachini, Coachini. <laughs> I finally get to meet you, bro. It's so funny, uh, like, listen to the, the funny stories that they didn't have. Uh, uh, no, that's Henny, real. Henny, Henny worked the shit out of it. <laughs> like, when we first got there, we were like, bro. Because, no, this was the thing. We we knew not you were a rookie coach, but this right. was your first time having your own room. Yep. So, me knowing that, I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to get over You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I'm going to try to see what I can get away with, you oh, know? Shit. And this motherfucker was like, nah, bro. 
<laughs> we working. Nah, we, when we when we on this field, we working. Yeah, Outside the field, meeting room, we cool. We Gucci. But we on this motherfucking field, we working. And I and I, I at first I was like, nah, get the fuck out of here. But right. then as we every every, every day, day, every it's week up. we doing the same thing. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Then you start to see like. We set the tone. That's right, we start bro. setting the tone for practice. We out there early than the motherfucker. I mean, me and AD, we be out there an hour before practice just knowing, like, okay, let's get up warmed up, yep. stretched, you know, be around the area where he going to be at so yep. we ain't got to jog 100 yards away, that you stuff. know. Just, just some vet, yeah, vet, just vet just shit, just man. Vet stuff. And that's, that's what I'm saying, though, bro. But, like, I appreciated all that. You know, you talk about how we were always, you know, away from – the, the the where we kind of operated in our own little space we call that the dog pit mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and, and and we was in our space because dogs don't eat with cats you know yeah, that's the yeah, mindset yeah, yeah, yeah. so we ain't fucking <laughs> around nobody else like we getting our mind right we getting ready to go to work and that's what it's gonna be about. thanks and yeah. so like to me man I just appreciate the fact that you know like he talked about him him ad getting out there early getting their mind right setting the tone for the younger cats and then being able to have those guys lead the way, you know, knowing that that this, it wasn't no games at this point. Like, this is straight focus, right? Everything that we're doing is geared towards getting better. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk about the dog work mentality, and it's either you're getting better or you ain't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Right. And then when you have that kind of mindset, man, like, it, it carries over to your drill work, you know, your everyday drills, your, your pre-practice stuff that he's talking about, where we're getting out there early, getting our mind right, getting warmed up. You know, and so we, we was getting better. You ain't. So, what was the biggest change from like going from college to the NFL? I want to like know what coaching that wise. Was. I want to know coming into our room. You got the best three tech no that doubt. ever played the game. No you got going from me, college to AD. You got a bunch of you know. You got a couple of vets in there that you feel like no. was that intimidating coming into that room. First of all, like I'm from the streets. Come on, man. Hey, come on. He ain't intimidated by nobody. He said I was like, that's that's what it wasn't intimidating. Ain't no such thing as an intimidation, but it's like, and it's just a respect, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. I understood what that was. Like, I embraced that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, I got that work. Like it's 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 like Gucci. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now let's go to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it what was my mindset. And I just appreciate the biggest thing was getting a feel for the individuals. Like, mm-hmm. you know, meeting AD prior to meeting everybody else. Meeting Brock prior to meeting everybody else. Those were the two vets that you kind of, you know, he they've like, earned yeah. their respect in the National Football yeah, League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as a coach going o- into a new room, like how can, you know, I get the two top dogs in the room from a vet standpoint, reach out to those guys, kind of share the mindset you know, my beliefs, what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to build, and then, you know, having everybody work together on one accord. And I think that that's, was the biggest I feel like for that's fire because you, you was yeah. a new coach coming in instead of trying to strong on. Come on, man. It's like, hey, bro, this the, is this what it uh, is. Let me, let me holler at the two vets uh, and see what y'all got going on, and then is. we can come like, together and work respect. out that way. Yeah. That's respect for yeah. the game first and foremost. Like, mm-hmm. like nobody else, you can't just, in my opinion, just come into a situation – and just Debo some shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, on like, some, like, uh, yeah. I, I ain't, <laughs> what's, your, what's the coach name they used to coach for the Texans? Um, Who, Bill, B- Bill O'Brien? Bill O'Brien, bro. That, 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 whole, that whole Belichick tree is like that. We ain't going to I mean, we we get into they, it too they, deep. But <laughs> that whole, if you're not Belichick and you came from under there and you think you can do that. that bro, for the is, longest, Bill O'Brien shit. claimed the fame was he yielded Tom Brady before. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that whole we ain't gonna even get it. Cause uh, you gonna get me mad because talking about Matt Patricia and the rest <laughs> of the motherfuckers. But uh, no, nah, man, because not, not intimidated. But you know, you you're a first year coach. Yo. You come into a room, and it's like, what do I? How do I coach these motherfuckers? You know what I'm saying? They already doing their thing. Like, how do I coach them? You there, know, there was a plan, bro. There was a plan, and there's goals, and you knew exactly what it was that we wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, mm-hmm. we're trying to be the best. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you go into a situation like I did, my thing was look at every individual person. Like I broke down every one of you guys prior to, you know, when I got the job. Right. Mm-hmm. And so how can I find ways to get every individual better? Right. You know, and it's looking at things that we can cor- correct, whether that be, you know, movement skills, mm-hmm. uh, hands, hand placement the lack of hand usage, mm-hmm. uh, pad level, which we're correcting every day. Right. You know, what is it that's holding him from being the 
ultimate player. Mm-hmm. And so when you do that, then you can organize a plan for every individual. And I think that's the way you do that. And so remember when I came into that room, I talked to every single person about things that I felt like they needed to get better at. Yeah. Every one of them in the yeah. room at the same time. I remember this day. So Brock about what I thought about him. So AD what I thought about him. Fox, uh, Sebastian, everybody that was in that room, right, Greg, all those guys that – because I wanted everybody to be on the same page so that we can help each other get better. Right. That's a because I don't D-line. believe is 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 one of those deals where you know we're not in it together. Like we talk about, you know, having a servant leadership and and being able to, you know, help everybody get better with with no agenda behind it. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the approach. Right, you know? right. I'm with I, I want to know how many clips you went through AD tape and seeing he needed work. <laughs> a lot of them do. <laughs> he said a oh, lot of them. what? Yeah. See, hey, that's how I know this motherfucker love coaching. Because yeah. if you can coach up AD and no. tell AD, hey, bro, yeah, you did make that play, but uh, your gap over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, hey, that shit used to kill me. And I look back at AD, it. AD, was like, man, this shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Coach. Hey, hey real talk, But I, I, I appreciate that's, that's it because, you know, from AD to understand, like, as a man, like, yeah, I, am, I know my gap over there. I'm out here to make it plays, but, you know, I appreciate him as a coach getting on my ass about, right. you know what I'm saying, not getting in my gap. You know no what I'm saying? I think, you know, we both respected you just for that because it was right. like, damn, you know, he came in here not just, you know, a yes right. man or, you know, yeah, like I say, intimidated or not one of the coaches because we dealt with that. Right. But, um, you know, you came in, you wanted to make us better. No and doubt, I think bro. that's, you know, the mindset. We was like, okay, we can respect that. That's you right. know, and that's why love. we went out to work. Yeah. yeah. You ever, have you ever had one of those uh, players where you like, you couldn't tell them shit? They just know everything, whether it be college <laughs> or in the field. Like, how did you deal with that? Yeah, or, I think there's always like those that. type of players, you know, and sometimes you just have to show them better than you can tell them. Mm. Yeah. You know, because if I can't tell you anything, then let me show you what yeah. the issue yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah, film yeah. don't lie. Eye so, in the sky, so never there, lie. There you go. So sometimes when you have those type of guys, then I'll just show you because maybe you see better than you hear. <laughs> yeah, you facts. Know? And we just got to handle it like <laughs> right. that. Hey, that film <laughs> session of motherfucker. You know? Hey, that <laughs> film <laughs> session of motherfucker. That <laughs> grimy too. And I like, I loved it because, like, he got up there. And even if you, like, if, if it was me, yeah. he'd be like, hey, Brock, I see you on the ground right there. You know what I'm saying? Damn, babe. Get, get, get up off the ground. No doubt. Yeah. You getting crushed right now. I'd be like, damn, coach. Hey, but no, I, I, I appreciate Bring you back that. To all love. Um, what are the new tactics in recruiting, man? You you in college now. Right. You know, you're not in the league, so now you got to do recruiting. You got to go into the homes like yeah. you talked about earlier. Um, what are the new tactics to getting some of these recruits? You know, everybody wants the money now, right. but you know, what what are your, you know, some yeah. of your tactics that you use? No doubt. No, nah, I think it's it always starts with relationships. B. Mm-hmm. You know, I think like you know me, you know better than a lot of guys. And at the end of the day, you know, when you can be personable with people, like you talk about, the same approach that I took when I took the LA Rams job is the same approach that I take every day on the recruiting trail. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I want to be able to extend myself to be vulnerable to whomever it is that we may be recruiting or I may be recruiting Mm -hmm. from a relationship standpoint so that you can know who you're dealing with. Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, trust has to be earned one way or the other. Right. Both ways, right? Right. And so, you know, that's, I think that's, that goes a long way. And when you can build those type of relationships that are, most of the time going to withstand the test of time Mm -hmm. that allows you to have the best chance at recruiting the right individual. Right. Right. Cause you really need the right guys. Cause I mean, obviously, you know, in this, you looking at high school tape and you looking at, Oh man, five star, three star, four star. But the, 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 the way you're going about it, you could take that three star, take that two star and develop them into whatever you want them to be. Yeah. What are you looking for in the recruit? So there's kids out there going to probably watch this. Like you say, you want the footage. And so I'm, I'm Coachini. What am I looking for in a kid right now? Like what type of dog you looking for? Yeah, th- that is, you know, a yeah. dog, you know, mm-hmm. straight up. You know, sometimes guys don't always have the elite measurables or, mm-hmm. you know, be the tallest guy, the biggest guy, the strongest guy. But when you got, you know, yeah, something yeah, in your yeah. chest that's pumping louder than yeah. everybody else, I'm rocking with that. Because I trust my ability as a coach to get you better. You know, there's no one better in the game that has been there, 
from a uh, you know to be able to to help you reach that level of competitiveness when you talk about defensive line play, then I feel like I am, right? And so I know that I can help anybody or help mm-hmm. everybody get better. That's just the way I feel. Yeah. And that may be an issue. Right. But at the end of the day, I feel that way. Right. And so if you have those things that you can't coach, right, and then you're able to to apply the above-the-neck approach to the game, just being a student of the game, you want to be coachable, like you understand mm-hmm. the game, you're, you're smart, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And and shit, I could help you with the rest. Of yeah. So so okay. So you t- you would take a kid who who might not have all the skill, right? He he might not have a size, but he coachable over a kid who has everything and he uncoachable. Of course, because if you're uncoachable, then what's the use of having all of those things? Yeah. Mm. I can't coach you. Yeah. yeah. And then what? How can we get? How can anybody get you better if you they can't coach you? Right. Yeah. And that's right. crazy because you see a lot of kids like that. They be like, man, he got everything, but he on the sideline cursing his coach, throwing his helmet and they shit. Got, they probably one of those kids like you spoke about earlier that has the answers and you can't tell them anything. And so now it goes back to. Someone showing them better than they can tell them because they see better than they hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's that's the issue, man. But I think uh, what I've been finding as I've gotten back into the recruiting um, world is that a lot of these young men are a lot more prepared than what it's been in the past. Mm. Whether that be having families, uh, a parent in their in their lives that's kind of helping them, and that's talk. I'm talking about the the off-the-field stuff from a football preparation standpoint, Mm -hmm. as well as the the football side of things when you talk about trainers and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just being in better shape and more prepared technique-wise, although there's still room for growth. So how do you you feel about kids that just, like – Constantly working out, like not like uh, year-round football. I love it. You know, I'm, that's that's me all day. Dog yeah. work. Go get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're getting better. You ain't. You know, and there's there because I don't. I think at this level in their lives, like, you know, if you're constantly working out, there's obviously you need to have a little bit of rest in there. Right. But you know, we'll we'll have to figure out where that comes. You know, where that rest comes because I don't believe in, you know, um, if uh, then then hitting a wall. And not being able to perform when it's time when your team needs you, you know. Mm-hmm. So there's a fine line of that, you know. And that's why I think having the right trainers nowadays can kind of push these guys, but not necessarily. <laughs> hey, smart. I'm laughing you know, because I'm, la- I'm thinking about all the little sm- little smart shit you used to tell her. <laughs> Real talk. Hey, yeah, he'd be talk. in the meme room. He see your ass get get. Dumped or something, you like, hey, you might need a massage. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to start doing. You see, AD, do AD, do AD. <laughs> hey, yo, yeah. that shit used to kill me, fun. bro. I have fun bro, in the me, Hey, I don't, don't know. Think. We'll be in the meeting room forever, though. That, that's it's one thing I did. Up, like, dog. that shit, nah, that like, motherfucker yeah. have us in the meeting hey, room two it's hours. It's crazy chill because, up, like, during the, oh when you playing God. in the game, you don't think like all this shit going on, but when you watch film, you're like, ooh, bro, I was looking it's bad. bad. It's real out there. It's real out there. And then uh, you look at like what what it start from. <laughs> Coach break it down. It started with your step, yep. then it's your, your hand, then go from there. No that, dope. That's why you got dumped. You be like, damn. Real hey, talk, but bro. uh talk about it. You talk briefly on it. Like, what is it what's the most important attribute to ha- uh having like longevity when it comes to, you know, Playing in the league and things yeah, like that. I think uh, taking care of his body, man, that's one of the things that you guys did well. Anytime that you can reach the double digit, you know, goal of playing in the league, be mm-hmm. man, that's that's awesome, bro. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was my goal. Shit, you know, the the the, the <laughs> yeah. ten, 10 years, dog. Yeah, right. You reach ten, you you should be set for for life and everything, man. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's just about taking care of your body, man, and, and doing those things, like investing in your body to take care of your body. I yeah. think a lot of the times, you know, even the, I understand the mindset as a young guy that didn't necessarily went undrafted, so you didn't necessarily have the true finances to, mm-hmm. to really invest in yourself like, you know, people that had right. it. You know, it's different. And I think that's why NIL these days mm-hmm. helps that. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you can truly take advantage of – of taking care of your body earlier mm-hmm. to create longevity, mm-hmm. you know, when you're thinking about it that way. Right, that's right, the mature, right, right. that's the seeing past the right now. Right, now I right. feel A lot right. of people with NIL want to get rich and thinking yes. that it's, it's a wrap. Oh, I think, yeah. I think oh, yeah. NIL. You got to be thinking, like, this is the set you up 
mm. for long term. Mm. I think yeah. NIL is fucking a lot of kids up mentally. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like that I'm not going on a real recruiting trip right. to see the tradition and to see the college and see the, the, the players and talk to the coaches yeah. and get to know people on campus and stuff like that. Really experience the campus life. It's like who got the biggest bag now? That's mm-hmm. why I'm going. So yeah. just because you're taking that bigger bag don't mean you're going to be set up in the right program yeah. or you mm-hmm. – these coaches throwing all this money at this kid and just to, right. might be able to keep him from USC, right? right? Let me keep this kid from going to USC. We'll give him a little bit of playing time, but he's not gonna be able to his he's not gonna be able to blossom like how he would yeah. if he was actually at SC. That's so crazy. let's just keep him away from that. And that's the that's that's the thing that that a lot of these cats have to understand that sometimes like like when you talk about truly being developed, like if you're a young man and you're a football head, like I think or know you are, mm-hmm. especially if we talk a defensive line, bro. right? And you doing your research, right? You come, you know, first of all, uh, if a school like SC is recruiting you, we have all of the resources mm-hmm. in the world. That's first and foremost. Thank God that we're, we're fortunate to have all of the resources in the world. So you're able to still, you know, have what you're allotted to be able to have from an NIL standpoint. Mm-hmm. That's Gucci. Right. Not only do you have that, but then you have – Coaches that are able to truly develop you and propel you for the next level and get you there better than anybody else in the world. Right. So because there may be a, a school that, that has some resources that are able to are trying to, you know, put a different type of bag in front of you, mm-hmm. you know, some cats taking that over tr- true Truly development, development that, yeah. tell, that tells me a lot about a lot of guys. Like, mm. like well, you you're got, not a true football head. Yeah. And then you think about it, it's a 16, 17, 18 year old kid getting, hey, they offering, let me give you $5 million. It's like, it's, it's, it's fucking them up mentally because, like, how do I, you want me to say no to $5 million when this other school only offering me 20K or whatever? It's like, I feel like it's fucked up in the situation, in that type of situation. Yeah. But it is kids out there that are actually, on the flip side, actually taking trips and trying to see what's going on, but it's very few far in between because it's so much money being thrown out yeah. there. But my thing is, it's, a, it's, it's money being thrown, but it's, like, not that far off to where you feel like you you would take your development over another school. Right. Like, a school might be throwing, it ain't going to be no $5 million to twenty k. You see yeah. what I'm saying? It may be whatever, let's just say 800 to one mil or mm-hmm. 800 to 900 mm-hmm. like and you're gonna go with 900 over eight right with, just with because you, and, the, and that's a, the better coach giving you eight right. whatever the case may be right you see what i'm saying yeah right. so it's like still weighing those things bro this is not the end of the of of of, of, of all right like you right. got a future so let's still invest in my future and know that i have everything that i need to truly maximize what I'm going to get when at, it, the, at the, when it comes. When it comes to that. So so when these kids are getting this money, do you feel like they should also come with some type of financial literacy program? A thousand percent. Yeah. You know, a thousand percent. Because, like, you got to understand that, you know, like, you coming from nothing and it's just like a boom right in front of you right now. Yeah. So, like, th- th- to not have that, that's why, you know, we encourage our, our guys and we give them all of the information that they need from a – financial literacy standpoint to be able to help them make the best decisions, mm-hmm. you know, and educating them throughout the process when you talk about the whole recruiting process and onboarding them, right, mm-hmm. when they're having those NIL meetings and things of that nature. So that comes, that that's critical right. in, my, in my mind. I, I love the fact with the NIL, this is the beautiful thing about the NIL. I love when they do, when they are set up, you are, you do have financial literacy and you are able to do the things in college that usually guys would do in the NFL. So oh. that's like buying your mama a house, mm-hmm. setting your people up. So you can set them up while you in college. So when I get to the league and get to my big money, hey, y'all good. Y'all good, good already. Y'all good. Mama, you got a <laughs> house, yeah, daddy, you got a already. house. I bought, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, and then they coming out with the, with the financial literacy. So now they know yeah. what, what to invest yeah. their money in. What, and they probably already have things going on that, that's you right. know. So now the kids coming in, to the league, they don't have to. You don't have to play a thousand years, you know. Or feel like you got to play, you know, eight, nine, ten years because you need to make that bag. Now you right. can play your six, seven, eight years, get more out the league than they get out of you because that's what you see in a lot of. That's right. Is what well, back in the day was you know dudes trying and hurting themselves to play ten years, thirteen years because okay. they wasn't set up. That's right. Now uh-huh. get kids coming out of college with nil with the finances, they're a little bit more set up. So you can. 
play your, you know, in your prime six, seven years, and you know, once you feel like, man, I'm, I'm a little banged up, whatever, I can call it a quits and just go back into my, you know, off the off the field money. Yeah. I feel like that's the beautiful side of NIL is when it's set up the right way. No doubt. I, I'm happy with the NIL because uh, with with the kids being able to get some type of compensation for for the time that they didn't put in, right? Because before it was just like, hey, we giving y'all a free education. And we give you some food to eat while you're on campus. It was just like, but at the end of the day, I, y'all, I'm I'm putting paper in in the, in the university pocket, right? right? All this shit is getting built at the school because my, let's let's be real, football team, right? right? Football team, if unless you got a college basketball team like Kentucky or Duke or something like that, where well, they bringing in a bunch of the money, it's it's coming from the football, right? right. We put in the work. We out here out, the, the two days working out, film session, doing all this shit, putting our body on the line, right? Y'all giving us three four hundred dollars, three hundred four hundred dollars a month, a month, a month, a month that right? Shit, Lime eating it up in a, in a day. <laughs> so it's like, I'm glad that they're able to put some type of money in their pocket yeah, no, no. and be yeah. able to take care of themselves and their family foremost. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that's a beautiful thing about it. Yeah, but I it, think everybody agree with how how good it is. You mm-hmm. know, for the opportunity, I think more so the discussion becomes just the structure of it. Yeah. And or the the lack. You feel like it should be a limit on how much a player should get paid. I think that just should be structured. You yeah, know, yeah. I think there should be structure. To right now, it's a wild, wild west. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And that's that's where it becomes more of an issue, and you kind of take away the, the you know the competition element of it from the standpoint of going to again like we talk about who can develop me, what school is truly best for me. Yeah. Because it's all over the place mm-hmm. with, to, with, you know, what can be thrown out. There. You feel like that's why Nick Saban got out? He was like, fuck this. That's what he said, I believe. Something something along those lines. And so, you know, I think, you know, if that's if that's that's how you feel, then you know, I, I get it. I, yeah. I understand that. So. But if you're a player, D-lineman, if you're watching this and you want to be developed and to have all the techniques, man, come to USC, bro. Yeah. Coach and they Haney, give you bro. financial literacy. You heard Coach Hand down. Because he needs where is that when you want to get better, when you want to find out where you are and get better, bro. I, I mean, he made me better, and I thought I was – I, I thought I was, you know, good. But when you got somebody telling you, nah, your hand placement could be here, it could be there, and you coachable and like, okay, you know, let me try this out. Yeah. And you see it make your game better. Mm-hmm. Man, I ain't, feel like ain't a better feeling. I, you know what it is like. You know what I'm saying, just sitting here talking to you for the few moments we had and listening to you on mic talk. I feel like it's it's more so of like the delivery of how you talk to mm-hmm. people, right? Mm-hmm. That players coach where I can feel like you 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 coaching me, you teaching me, and I can still feel like I'm not being disrespected. It's right. like right. on some cool shit. Like I'm <laughs> you still my coach, but you 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 giving me on, on some homeboy type <laughs> shit, right? No. Nah, so thanks. the delivery is like, right. well, I can I can accept it. And I'm like, all right, bet I, I feel what you're saying, coach. Yeah. Right, right, right. Versus. When some coaches drill it to you and you like, man, whatever. No, nah, fuck like that. You don't it's the coach it. that ain't never played. That's where it <laughs> oh, is. Yeah. It's the coach that don't, <laughs> that don't understand what you're yeah. going through, trying to tell you, nah, man, put your weight here to do this technique. Well, show me then, coach. Yeah, that's what I be like. <laughs> show man, me, show, like show you me, said, me hey, doing this. Show shit. me better than you can tell me. <laughs> right. Show me then. No, nah, fact, and I think that's where it came from because he played, oh, so shit. he understood. So oh, I can no. tell him like. Coach, I in his four eye. Right. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling you that feel pressure. Me? Like, how do I keep my gap? Like, he like, bro, you gotta fight with this arm. You know, I'm like, oh no, uh, I never thought about it like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. But you know, like, right. when you don't have that, it's hard to so to dumb. get better, bro. And then you know, I've dealt with having a coach that didn't get me better. But um, let's talk about looking back on your career right. and to this point, where has what has been your greatest moment, bro? Um. In life, or just you're talking about football? I'm talking honestly, about as a coach. As, as a, coach. a coach, what has been your greatest moment as a coach um, to this point? You won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl, man. You know, been blessed to coach. You know, two of the best to, to play the game. When you talk about yourself and AB, you know, I've, I've been blessed to have some really good players that mm. I've coached. You know, with the Rams, with the Chargers, uh, in college. I mean, I, I greatest moment, man, yeah. is just. Just having the opportunity to do it every day. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Like because I love every every moment I have, the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, year before last was a tough, tough season after the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. But it mm-hmm. was still when you look back, those guys played well, mm-hmm. and it was like a bunch of guys that nobody knew. Right. That was a right. fantastic moment for me mm-hmm. in the midst of sorrow. Right. You know, yeah. In the midst yeah. of a disappointing yeah. year, mm-hmm. like last year. 
You know, nobody knew who they was except nobody. AD. <laughs> Nothing but rookies out there. <laughs> the Puka po- well. Nakua, prime you know, example. Nobody yeah. didn't know who he, who he was, and yeah. now this man. He, 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 he went off. We talked yes. about that defense yeah. last year that the Rams yeah, had. Man. I knew all them people, them <laughs> players, and I knew all of them wasn't supposed to be out there. <laughs> but, you know, knowing, seeing the development and seeing, like, okay, you know, yeah. I'm watching him on the uh, on, so, on the TV. I'm like, damn, okay, he holding his own so out there. So I tell people, like, that was probably my greatest moment mm-hmm. as a coach because mm-hmm. of, like, the fact that they were all young. Right. They were all fresh out of college. Mm-hmm. You know, with a with a mixture of guys that hadn't had starting roles for you, but has played a little bit, mm-hmm. and then now being moved into starting roles, you know, and watching them cats perform yeah. was phenomenal. And I know that we had so much shit we had to work on. Yeah. But watching them develop over the course of a season mm-hmm. and getting a playoff and what people mm-hmm. ask and execute the game plan, and Brock could tell yeah. you like, I'm always scheming. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. You know, this shit real. Yeah. You know, always, like, like, always scheming for the dogs. Always scheming for the dogs. And so, like, trying to put these guys in the best position to have success, mm-hmm. play in and play out, teaching them what looks can allow them to have success mm-hmm. based off of what the offense present, mm-hmm. how you're going to get blocked prior to the ball being snapped. That's why you come play here, man. Because that's the type of stuff that you're getting. You just ain't getting that everywhere. I'm yeah. Just you, that's, nah. that's can you name? Good. Can you name one guy from that D line at the, the year after the Super Bowl, right? That surprised you from the beginning of the season till the end. That you was like, Kobe man, Turner, rookie. Mm. You know, nobody mm-hmm. knew Kobe. Third round draft pick should have been defensive rookie of the year. They yeah. played him. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Cat started at Richmond University. Right. You know, then transferred to Wake Forest. You know, smart as a mug. Got that dog in him, mm-hmm. physical, you know what I'm saying? But don't have the intangibles that everybody talk about. Right. 6'1", was 280 pounds when we drafted him. You know what I'm saying? But but he had shit that yeah. I like. Yeah. You know, he could yeah. move. He was physical. Yeah. And he played with tremendous effort. I should be able to get you better. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what that's, yeah, that's, that's all I need. He said, you know? yeah. So, that's like, give me yeah. that. Yeah. We Gucci. Right? Yeah. Like, that's all I give a fuck about. <laughs> right. Straight up. Man. And that's why he was a dog. And that's because I'm telling you, like, so everybody looking for ready-made products. Like, right, right, I right. I thirst and feed off of just other shit. Yeah, like, yeah, nah. Other shit that motherfuckers ain't looking <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah, see yeah, what yeah. we could do with this. Bruh. You know and I, I, I can feel that, bro. Yeah. I almost can feel that. Yeah. Just that aura just coming listen off to of him you. Talk. Just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Fuck, fuck getting a five-star, bro. Right. Give me that three-star. Let me yeah, show my star. ability as a coach mm-hmm. on how I can get this motherfucker better. Mm-hmm. And let me show you, I can get this motherfucker get drafted. Like, when nobody up. else was thinking about it. I feel like, dude, else. that's no the mark of a, a great coach, that's right? That's the mark of a great coach, Because anybody can coach a five-star ready-made player, right? Well, you ain't give me a kid that's – give me a there. kid, a one-star, no-star, and let me show you, let me put him in a position to be better than that five-star that somebody else got. Mm-hmm. Man, so dog. That, but this also, you know, because at the end of the day, though, Still having like just because you're one, two, three, four, five doesn't mean you're you're developed and you're ready. Either. Right. And right. so at the end of the day, you know, I've been fortunate to make a living doing it the way I just explained. I also have a feeling and a thirst for when you give me something that's, you know, quote unquote, let's say five star now, then fuck it, if, I, if we did it with that. Then you know what's about to happen with this right, other right, shit. Right, yeah. right, so like, right, there's right. that element of it too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. that's why I'm like, don't don't get it twisted. Like, yeah. Now it's now we really about to turn yeah, up. Yeah, facts, facts. So it's like, yeah. Okay, so you at USC right now? Can you give me a name of a kid that that came in and you I, like? I can't give you a name of that just from an NCAA rules standpoint. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, I just can't do that. But like, it's like that. Yeah, you, know, you got some kids that. that's. It's like that. Yeah. It's like that, and and um, you know, and and we working. But at the end of the day, you know, this is a a, a situation where, you know, you got to withstand the test of time. And signing day is not until December, and uh, we're we're super fortunate, you know, where we are right now with with guys that that we're looking at and that we're hoping to on board. You know, some really good families, um, really good. Uh, kids and, and they, they, they do things the right way. You're just excited about the opportunity mm-hmm. that you get to recruit guys. And that part is precious to me. Like, I don't take none of that for granted. I really do love it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. People are like, man, why you went back to college? Yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. I love this shit. And I love relationship building. I love helping people have success. I love showing you that you can beat the odds. Right. Like, that right. shit turns me on. 
much. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real Straight about up. it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it does. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm put here to do. Like, that is my calling, to help motherfuckers beat the odds. I was a motherfucker that beat the odds. Right, yeah. right. In life. Yeah. yeah. Like, if, yeah. if I'm going to date, by the, thank God, we Gucci. Right. See what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right, right. Like, come on, man. Like, so, like, and when you got somebody that's invested in a you like that and that really want it for you like that, yeah. like, what we talking about? Because right. ain't nobody rocking like that beat. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's why I put everything on this shit. Like, right. I, 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 I want these cats to have success, man. Right. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome, bro. Just of you just wanting to to develop players. Because mm-hmm. in this day, and everything want to be fast. Everything... Oh. It's fast food, man. They just want to get these guys out, get get them into the league, say they, they developed them so they can get their opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And people don't want to work no more, bro. They work I, ethic is, is Question trash. from uh, from the internet, right? So I've seen this, and we didn't talk about this test time for a long time, right? You think it'll ever be a kid that'll be high school ready for the NFL? Yeah. And, and, uh, from high school, that'll be able to make that jump. From high school to NFL and, and, and football, nah, possibly bro. skill position guys, but like you know, that's that's tough, bro. Because Eey. people don't understand how real the league is. Like I tell people all the time, like I know damn well I don't expect no part of the fucking offensive line or the defensive line to be ready. I From high know, school to, I, to I, NFL, that shit ain't happening. You can't Size. get up enough weights <laughs> right. to be ready for for a motherfucker that's thirty four years old with three kids, bitch. Hey, I'm hey, saying, I don't give a damn how much you kids. lift. That shit ain't happening. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it, it is what it is. Like, you can't lift enough weights, bitch. It's just not happening. That, Mentally, you don't know enough ball. Mm, you yeah. can't get coached like that. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how good of a situation yeah. you've come out of. Yeah. You can't get that type of coaching. And so, like, what are we talking about? Yeah, because you, 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 you ain't going to see them yeah. type players. Because you come in on, high man. school... And you, you a man amongst boys, but uh, when you get up in the league, boy, it's all men up there. You, oh, did man. you it's ever watch uh, Darnell Dockett? Yeah. High school shit. I remember him. I played against him in college when I was at Georgia Tech. He was at Florida State. Uh, you ever, he was a big motherfucker, but he playing against <laughs> like, probably like, private like, school. Little bit of dudes or something. <laughs> you there was smaller stuff. I don't know why. No, he, he was just you. He had a neck roll. <laughs> he had a neck roll. So he bro, motherfucking that massive. Man, bro, bro, it looked know. unfair, bro, watching him <laughs> destroy lot D O linemen, picking them up, driving them into the backfield, running back, <laughs> see him, up. they just fall into the ground like he's still leaving his feet. <laughs> like that man was a terror in high school, bro. It's like yeah, it was I'm just like it, why, look, it looked like they put a, 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 t- a eight year NFL vet right. on a high school football team. Just That's what him. he looked and just let him, bro. Let's just go, go do whatever ball. you want, bro. Don't go to yeah, no gaps. <laughs> just go get the football, bro. Yeah. Like and that's what he was doing. And he would have went funny. up to the league and got thrashed. They got smacked. They got thrashed, out the gate. bro. Because it ain't just the physical. It's, a, it's it's technique. Hell of a career. But you had to develop through college, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You got to go. Yeah. You got to go through the. The grind, a different style of coaching, man, and, and see things that are different. Like, it becomes more above the neck as mm-hmm. you get to that, that league. And when you get in that league, it's really above the neck. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't really the physicality like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there, yeah. but, it, but it's more of the mindset and how you play shit, how you see shit prior right. to the ball being snapped. That allows you to have the success that you see. Have. It's, I'm glad you're saying it. It's yeah. not really there like that. Because I like watching college football. Yeah. He don't. I don't. And he I made a it. comment a while back. He was saying, like, college football is just like with the technique, and a lot of players just really just be out there and shit like that. Yeah. Just running into the ball, you know what I mean? Like, I feel you. it's like I like when I see a motherfucker use use his hand, choke that bitch out, right. get off the block, the make a tackle. You don't, you ain't gonna see that in the. You gonna see somebody swim, somebody get in there, right. fall into a tackle. But the beautiful part about it is you gonna see that at that seat. Look, 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 come on, man. You gonna see yeah, that, you, that, y'all, you gonna see that at that seat. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I hope that we could have you watching college football again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's yes. another Coach goal. Ian, of mine. We didn't, I didn't already. I say, bro, we gotta yeah. tell them can we come to come can we come watch a game and, and we vlog that for our, have it ready for our oh, vlog. Oh yeah, we'll yeah, we'll definitely yeah, come back up here, gotta man. come back for a game, man. Gotta, gotta see Coach Henny right. rock out, man. Sure, bro. Um I wanna flip the script just a little bit. We've been talking about coaching a little minute yeah. and I don't wanna, you know, phase get over the fact that man, you're a husband and a father, brother. Um 
let's you know let's talk about a little bit about yourself as a dad. What have you learned about yourself as a dad? Your new father. Uh, how old your baby girl now? She'll be two. Man. Two. Uh, two. So not uh, new, but yeah, like yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, that's still that's uh, still fairly, fairly new. Fairly new. <laughs> you know. Uh, what have you learned about yourself as a dad, dog? Man, that that you know, patience is a virtue. Yes. You know, and having patience with the kids, man, is yes. critical. Uh, patience in your marriage and your relationship, you know, uh, it's it's awesome. You know, and I, I, I am absolutely uh, thrilled and full of joy, mm-hmm. you know, every day, every opportunity I get to spend time with her. Um, just had a, a long weekend for me where I was able to just kind of unwind a little bit mm-hmm. and just wake up to my daughter every day. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, just say happy, just good morning to her. Sing, mm-hmm. We sing our little songs in the morning. We sing our little songs before bed at night, yeah. you know, and then she like... You know, arguing with my wife, saying, that's my dad, dad. Yeah, 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 that's my dad, dad. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm right, baby. Right, that's your right. dad, dad. You know, so all oh, that's, man, I, I love it, bro. Yeah, I love man. being a father, man. What was, what, oh, let me see. what was that moment like whenever you found out it was going to be a girl? It was special. It was, it was, it was special, and it was like, it was kind of like, you know, I was I had them prepared myself mm-hmm. to be ready for whatever it was, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, mentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, although prior to that, man, going in college and talking to your homeboys, man, I want a boy and this yeah. and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, by the time I was matured and had went through life in a sense, you know, I'm like, shit, man, the Lord blessing me with with to be a father. Like yeah. I'm happy yeah. with whatever. Yeah, right, right. And 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 I'm saying the same thing about. You know, I'm hoping we get blessed with our second kid, mm-hmm. whatever that is. If it's right. another girl, I'm Gucci. You know what Man. I'm saying? Like, Man. I'm straight with two dogs. Yeah, I ain't yeah, yeah. tripping. Right. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. I get a little boy, that's a plus. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we cooking yeah, with you. you feel I'm me? But you. I'm, I'm all the way good, dog. And and I'm just so thankful, bro, I get the opportunity to be a daddy. That's mm-hmm. it. Straight Talk yeah. to me about because, you know, that's what kind of kept me or is keeping me from coaching right. is the amount of time you spend with your right. family. Right. Um, talk to us about how you, how you're able to, to to spend time with your family. Man, and things it's, like that. it's fire. Like a lot of people get this 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 career like you know misunderstood, dog. Mm-hmm. Like it's about the head coaches that you work with, the mm-hmm. people that put the schedules in place. Mm-hmm. You know, when you gotta get the opportunity to work with people that are like minded like you, that care about the same things you care about, where mm-hmm. family is important. Like here, family is important. Yeah. So there won't be an opportunity that I don't get a chance to spend time with my family. Now, when I'm on the road recruiting, that can't do nothing about that. You know, mm-hmm. that is part of the game. Right. You have to do that. Right. Those are certain time periods as a collegiate coach that you make your mind up to like, damn, I got to go get this grind. Right. Right. But I'm doing this grind so that my family could be Gucci. Right. Right. You know right. Saying? So I get those those 14 days in a, you know, fall or the spring. While I'm hitting the road, boom, boom, come back home on the weekend, kiss my baby, bye, bye, I'm back out on mm-hmm, Sunday, mm-hmm, feel me? Mm-hmm. And we got to do it again. But I'm FaceTiming every morning. You get your routine. You FaceTime every morning. You FaceTime at night. You mm-hmm. put another bed. Like, you find your way mm-hmm. to still be present, although right. it's not in the physical realm, you know, but it is what it is. How, man. You love it. How important is it to have, you know, a good, um, what am I? Routine? A, not a good routine. I guess... Like having a good partner, having a good, you know, um, off the field. Because, you know, that's what I, I never had any issues off right. the field. No doubt, never, bro. you know, because I had a wife, had a family. No How important is it to have like that solidified and, you know, in, in good standings and not having a bunch of distractions man, and things like got, that. that? That's so key and critical, man. And I encourage a lot of young guys, you know, guys that are just serious about life. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of talk to these guys all the time about making sure you got that part of your life right. intact. Right. Because when you got to a strong, you know, situation going on where people that truly care about you, your career, what you have going mm-hmm. on, and that can hold it down, and you guys are able to communicate effectively mm-hmm. to where there's, you know, open and honest communication, um, you know, I think that helps a lot, bro. Right. That helps you as a player. That helps you as a coach, you know, knowing that there's time periods that we're going to be doing what we got to do. Right. And, and that part, you can't control this shit. Right. That's, right. The, that's what we signed up for. And so, like, for me, you know, I love it, dog. Like, yeah, got to yeah. have that. Yeah. Or do you have any funny stories as being a dad that sure. you just, nothing just super embarrassing. Something yeah. maybe you you, 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 woke, you forgot something on because you, you were so tired with the baby or something like that. Like, yeah, it got to be I nothing mean, crazy. 
Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of funny stories. Shit, <laughs> when you put you on the spot, you can't do them joints hey, don't no, jump no, off. No, but let facts. us get off this camera. I you got plenty like, of them. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's something every day. It's That's something every day, it's dog. Something every day it's something every day. It's something every day. Like I, my daughter at the point right now, she's starting to say stuff every day. Mm -hmm. That's like just like what the fuck. Me and my old lady look at her, look, look at each other. I'm like, man, she just said that. Right, right, right. Uh, she just be in her little zone, mm -hmm. just talking and just saying stuff. And you wondering, like, where is she getting Right. I'm like, from? you got to turn that like, pad like, off. Like, like, let me like, get that pad. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it the iPad? Like, is it Miss Rachel? Miss Rachel Gucci on the iPad? Like, who is you, who is you learning uh, this from right now, though? That's crazy. Man, my daughter's so smart, though, man. It's, it, it blows you away by her ability to communicate right now at two mm -hmm. and truly understand things, put together little small sentences that, yeah. that you know what she's saying. Yeah. I speak to her. As if I'm a Harvard professor, <laughs> you know, and that's right. just the way I go yeah, about it. Yeah, and, yeah. And at the end of the day, like you gonna you gonna know all of these words. I'm just throwing words at you just to have in your vocabulary. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with, this, <laughs> with what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. I'll just say octagon, octagon, <laughs> octagon. You see what I'm saying? Right. Just, just learn the word. Uh huh. You feel me? And just that's just my way of going about. It. I want to stress. Her mentally, yeah, so that she can grasp everything, facts. and then boom, this is an octagon. Boom, mm -hmm. boom, oh, it's an octagon, and then mm -hmm. she's speaking words that's just like unbelievable. Right mm -hmm. now. I'm with you. I'm always about teaching lessons, man. I ain't have my father in my house in in, in my household uh. in my life, so you, uh, it's funny that I'm, I learned how to father through uh, watching TV. So, like, I learned from my wife and kids. You ever watched my <laughs> wife and kids? She always teaching uh. lessons, though. So I'm always teaching lessons yeah. through, like, going through the shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So That's it's crazy. Like, we, none of us, uh, we all look, grew up without our fathers. Yeah. I lost my mom at 16. You lost your, your mother oh, at yeah. nine. That's uh, crazy, uh, man. My dad was Uncle Phil. Right. So <laughs> that was my dad growing up. And, and Carl Winslow. Yeah, yeah, that was the them was the dads yeah, that I funny. looked up to when I was growing up. That's man. what's up, dude, dog. Yeah, you kinda learn. I, I didn't really take nothing for the show, but yeah. you kinda yeah. you get you just like you say, kinda stress your kids yeah. mind just to That's see what up. they can, you know, how they develop in and you know, can you trick them up, things like that. Yeah. I'm always I'm always doing that with my kids. Um Awesome. Real quickly, talk to, talk about what's happening in the NFL, just real brief. Yeah. The drop hip tackle. How is that going to affect the NFL defenses this um, year? Um, I just think uh, you know people are just more conscious about it now. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to just be ready to, to you know same stuff that you're teaching. It's not like people were teaching, you know, from what I know, mm -hmm. drop hip tackling. Mm -hmm. You know, it just happens to happens to playing fast on the football field. Right. So now that we're conscious of that being out of the game. You know the role, the rap and roll becomes more. Uh, Y'all say that like that gate attack or shit just easy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know. Just, look, look bro, listen. Tackle. I no. get what you saying, yeah. Mike. <laughs> I get what you saying, bro. Right. But we all know that drop hip tackle is some bullshit, bro. Right. Like, Cause you know what you basically doing. Somebody yeah. running f and you f you falling back on them. Right. I'm trying to keep you from going know, forward. For no, bro. It's the same thing. As, bro, it's the same thing. Is is a horse collar tackle? No, no. Yes, it is. No. You a horse collar. You doing what to the person? You grabbing him up back. top and you pull it. Him and back. a drop hip tackle is do, doing. You doing I, what? I'm doing That's dropping your fall on their legs. You dropping your weight. You dropping your weight backwards. And a lot of times. You know? Those people fall backwards, yeah. and then now my lower extremities are caught. Yeah. Just like on a horse collar tackle. That is a bullshit tackle, bro. And no, I, it and, is. And, and, and people, for people to even try to defend it, yeah. I'd be like, bro, if you see a lot of the drop hip tackles, the people who make those tackles don't really be that good. <coughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> Right. The people that make those tackles right. don't really be that good. Or don't yeah. not that fast. So right. that's the only yeah. thing they can so, do. So like, I get what you're saying, bro. But that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, not, that's it's a, not something they're trying to do. It's just something no, that. No, they are they trying to do something that. they're trying to do. Because they, can't, they, <laughs> because they don't know how to. Right. Because they don't they know don't how to tackle. But when you learn how to gator roll, that's the point of having a donut. That's the point of you. You pra right, you're right, practicing right. on your craft, I so you it. don't have to drop hip tackle, right? You are, you got all off season to train, get your speed right, to do all this. You got all this yeah, shit in front of you, yourself. right? Yeah, no you doubt. teach your see, but then come back to watching film, right? You don't yeah. get out of position. Yeah. So if you watch a film and you see what's coming, you can get in that position to make that tackle to make that play, yeah, I, I and you don't have that. to drop hip tackle That's nobody. A good point, cuz I, I respect that to the fullest. 
I hate I hate it because I got done like that before by somebody and and and, and you every time I see it done it's by somebody who's not that good, bro. <laughs> he says it's always by somebody that was, that's I, not. I that got drop him tack. I turn around. I see this nigga. You sorry, boy? <laughs> <laughs> you see, boy, get the boy. So now I'm leaving to the side. That's line. sad. That's, that's drop hip tackling, huh? <laughs> um. So real quick before we get off, y'all, I don't want to take too much of your time. It, it, this is our inspiration segment. If you want to inspire you, what you always do, somebody yep. to into coaching, inspire me into yep. coaching. You know that I I, I like coaching. I, I you know I don't mind teaching, but inspire me into wanting to get into coaching. Bro, the reason why you should be inspired to coach is because you owe that to the game first mm-hmm. and foremost. That's mm-hmm. one reason, right? The Lord has blessed you to be able to spend 10 plus years in the National Football mm-hmm. League, a dream that every player has when they first wake up about wanting to play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you have that opportunity to inspire others by what you know, what you've learned, what you've been able to to, to accomplish. Mm-hmm. You know, and then not only that, the person that you are, right? You actually do things the right way with the right heart behind it. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of people in the profession are just, you know, operating that way on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you've been blessed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, the knowledge that you've gained, being able to articulate that to young men is critical. Right. You know, and again, paying that type of respect to the game. Like, there's others that came before you, B, that, 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 pay respect to allow you to develop to the person that, that you are, bro. Right. And then, like, finding some type of way to give that kind of respect back to the game to a lot of these young men, dog, is critical. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I just okay. think you got so much to offer. And I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't truly believe that shit. Right. That's why, as a player, I always told you and AD the same shit. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all have a lot to offer to the game, man. When you, you when you come and you've seen it done a certain type of way, you've seen it done the way I do it. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? That shit ain't gotta be, you know, right. what's quote unquote normal. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And mm-hmm. so and 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 obviously success, you know, follows right. this type of shit. Right. So yeah. that's that's why I think you. Uh, Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate and it. I, and I got a perfect team for him to come coach. <laughs> man, you want me to come out there? Yeah, with them kids, man. Yeah, man, that's where I start off. Yeah, I start yeah. off with the Ducks and then, yeah. you know, move Shout on, out Southside Ducks. Southside, <laughs> Uh But we reached this yeah, part of the show, man, when we want to give you your flowers, man. We want to yes, appreciate so you, look, man. My boy Brock, me and Brock, we got our, our clothing brands. Brock brand clothing, as y'all can see. Nice. Yeah. And we like to give... Uh, Oh, Gift out some of so you know, I guess so That's for you, man. man. That's what for you. I'm talking about, baby. We appreciate you, you, you know, setting this up, man, coming in the USC. They building, you know. Thank you, USC, for you guys' hospitality, man, letting Brock Brand and the broadcast come in here. You know, this, one, this is not the last y'all going to see of us. Man, no yeah. We're going to have to come back and do a game day vlog. A game day vlog. vlog, man. Awesome, man. So, man, I Love to have y'all back, I appreciate, man. appreciate you, bro, love, man. brother. Shit, it was this, good man, to finally man. meet you, Coach. Man, we need I didn't hear so many man. stories about you, man. <laughs> hey. finally, I finally get to tell Fox I yeah. got to meet him, man. <laughs> so now, now no all Fox, we all, man, just just – we just got the the brotherhood, man. That brotherhood. Man, is you don't understand it's like go how how, it, how big of a smile they have on their face, man, talking about the, the the stories uh, that the child went imagine through. Imagine how I feel about it. That's yeah. why I love to be around these cats, man. And that's why all I want to be able to do is keep that alive because mm-hmm. that shit is real. Yeah. You don't you don't you don't put on stuff like that. Right. And people need to see what that really look and feel like. You yeah. know what I'm saying. So it's important to me. You know, to make sure that we we kind of, you know, keep this thing live, dog, because it mean a lot to me, and I know that shit is real, and it can mean a lot to and a lot of And y'all see that to all you recruits out there. Yes. Y'all hear these stories yeah. that this is I, – see, I, I wasn't there with them, and I'm and I'm the one explaining to him right. how good of a person that, 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 that they always talked about him when right. he wasn't around. So just imagine what type of person he is. You come to SC and play for Coach Hen, dog. Man, man. Oh, bro. You know, you know what it is. Uh, do you got any any, any last? Guys, don't forget Brock Brand Clothing on Instagram. I'm Petty Pet, Petty underscore underscore Pet on Instagram. Coach Hen, you got yeah. an Instagram page they can yeah. hit you, find you at? Yeah, yeah. Hit me on Easy Does It uh, Five Zero on Instagram. Dogworkapparel.com. dot com. Dog work dog apparel. apparel. Uh, let us. Get you some of that. Get you some of that dog work, man. If y'all been rocking with me from the beginning, y'all know the motto, man. Don't get ready, stay ready. Peace.